Hey guys, if you're new here, hello, my name is Amy. So, worst purchases of 2022. I decided to put them in a separate video because it was getting very, very, very long for the best purchases. I'm glad about that, but I do have some bad purchases. And I'll start off with the ones that you see on the thumbnails. Ready to wear is expensive and I don't like it when I don't buy clothes wisely. I'm the clothing person. I'm I'm the girl who likes the dress. And so when I make a less optimal decision about clothing, I just don't love that. But they're not so terrible that I totally regret them, but I will talk about some of the cons of these pieces from Elmaz, and this is part of their equestrian line, and this is their fleece jacket. It's actually really well made. The fabric is fantastic. It's so, um, it's so soft uh, and fluid, and the color is so vibrant. This is their fire color, so in French, feu. It's, it's a great color and it, it's a great material. The only thing about this jacket that I don't find that it works out as well for me, one is that the sleeves are not lined. So while it is a fleece body, the inside is a fleece body, the sleeves themselves are not lined. When I reach for a fleece jacket, like if I'm cold, right? If I'm cold and I reach for a fleece jacket, I want my arms to be warm too. And I know they probably made this for people that ride horses and that need to stay warmed up before they get on their horse. Probably, I don't know, but for some reason their arms don't need to be, which uh, I, I, I mean... I don't ride horses, so I don't know. The materials are so wonderful on this jacket, so I still recommend it, but only if you don't mind that the sleeves are not lined. Second thing is the cut is a bit strange. I am a petite woman. I have a very short torso for my height. I am 5'4", but I, I have short arms for my height and I have a very short waist. And so this jacket pretty much covers my bum. And my bum is wider than my waist and therefore it's very tight because unless i have a very long torso at which the bottom part of this jacket would land a bit higher like at a part of my body that is slightly smaller um it actually looks very strange right like it just looks very tight around my hip bum area and so I would say the fitting is a bit strange. So you do have to try on this jacket. I did get mine in the size small. If you're a taller person, I think it would work really well. Um, and it's it's cut relatively um, slim, I will say. It was just such a shame because I love the color, I love the material, and, and I honestly think that it would have been a perfect jacket otherwise. We have more Hermes, and I, I hate that because these are expensive. Um, so this is a pair of trousers, wool trousers, no less, that I bought. It's cropped. And this was from, you know, last year's uh, fall winter season, I think. It's a beautiful, beautiful material again. So I cannot fault it for the material. It's gorgeous. What I found about this garment, however, that didn't work out for me as much is that I find it hard to style. I think my wardrobe doesn't really work with this type of pants. First of all, I don't wear a lot of pants, let alone wool pants. I suppose it's more of a lounge wear, but I was trying to make it more of a, a piece that will work all the time. Plus, they're so expensive, I wanna be able to wear all the time, not just lounging in them, right? I totally forgot to show this one as well. So it is part of ready to wear. I totally forgot because it was tucked in at the bottom of my list. I know some of you will be shocked. I have been switching to buying more basics. Uh, not necessarily that they are cheap or anything. They're not. In fact, it's just basic colors, basic shapes, and basic patterns. Uh, simple is the right word. It's not basic. It's simple is the right word. Um, classic is probably also the other right word. So. While this shirt is so beautiful, the pattern is so cute and everything, I feel like 
I'm kind of over buying things that have a lot of patterns, which is why after this particular season, I haven't bought any other t-shirts from Hermes, even though their t-shirts are pretty fun. Um, they, they always make some sort of patterns that are part of their heritage, right? And they're cute. They're really cute. And it's so much more affordable to buy Hermes t-shirts versus Chanel t-shirts, for example. But for some reason, I'm just not drawn to them anymore. Um, so that's, that's why. That's why it made it into the worst purchase because I tend to like, I want to wear them, but like every time I, t I reach for it, I'm like, oh, nah. <laughs> I think I just choose something else. I'd rather choose like a plain. I'd rather choose for a scarf. It's so weird because I find that scarves are a whole different story. For me, they are plain. For me, they, they can be changed up. Like I can wear this side today, but I can wear the other side the next day. Or I can wear a different scarf. I don't know why. I, I like my scarves that much. Plus, they serve multi-purpose. Plus, this color. I don't know. This color. St I still feel like I chose the wrong color. I should have maybe... They didn't have all the colors at the time. But I should I should have maybe just went with um, the pink color or something. I don't know. This color is a bit dull on me. Okay, let's move on to handbags. Which, uh, again, I will just mention the top three. Because otherwise, we'll be here till tomorrow. Just kidding. But I will also follow up with a video, because I know it's been requested, a video on things that I have sold in 2022 and why. In no particular order, okay? I'm just going to mention the top three. The Chanel denim bag, the Chanel 22 bag, and the Prada crystal bag. And I don't have any of them to show you, unfortunately, which is probably why they ended up in the worst purchases list. And just because they are in my worst purchases doesn't mean anything, right? Like, don't take it in the wrong way. The denim bag has such a short-lived um, journey in my collection. I was really excited when I got it because it was a different type of bag and I don't own a denim bag and it was Chanel, right? I love Chanel so much. But it was a bag that I never reached for. And because I bought it in a... Winter season, come summer, still didn't reach for it and always just ended up switching out of it for some reason. There's just something about either the color or the combo or just the vibe in general that doesn't work with what I'm wearing usually. And so I just never ended up using it. And by the time I decided that I needed to do some editing in my collection and recuperate funds, um, it was time to let it go already. So yeah, it was a short-lived handbag in my collection that I actually never used. So that was a complete waste of money and time. The 22 bag, oh, <laughs> so much drama with that handbag. And I honestly wish that it worked out because I love, absolutely love using that bag, styling that bag. Um, I would get it again in a heartbeat if I know that there won't be issues with it. My issues were relatively minor, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link to my video explaining what happened. Uh, but essentially, I took it back to my store and they eventually gave me a credit for it without any explanations as to whether it was defective or anything. They just treated me as a good customer and didn't want me to be unhappy, I suppose. So um, that's great, but I miss the bag so much. Anyway, I'm so glad that a lot of you don't have issues. I have been seeing your comments and a lot of you tell me that you don't have issues, which I'm so grateful that a lot of you don't. I probably just got a bad batch um, and that's it. I think I'll try to get it back again eventually. Um, but is it a high priority? <laughs> Not really. I, I do miss it a lot, but maybe we'll see. If I have a travel opportunity, like if I can get it somewhere where I can save on it a bit, like in Paris, Europe, wherever, um, that would be great. That would be great. So we'll see. The Prada crystal bag. Oh, I know a lot of you will be kind of surprised, but some of you may not be. I remember some of you said to me that, oh yeah, the bag is okay. It's, it's fun, I guess, but I don't see it as being part of your permanent collection. It's just not your style. And someone said that and I was just trying to think about it. I'm like, is it really not my style? Because I think it was my style. I actually do miss it when, you know, we had 
New Year's Eve party, whatever. It wasn't really a party, but like I, I just thought I could dress up and I was missing a party bag. But at the same time, because I didn't have it, I just used any other bag, which was totally fine too. So in a sense, it was not an essential part of my collection, which I have to agree about that part is that it's not really an essential style that really adds to my collection. It's very different, it's very blingy, and it's fun. Um, and for what it was when I got it early on, uh, it was not too expensive. But when it came to chopping block, um, yeah, it, it was dispensable. So I guess it was a bit short-lived as well, even though I did enjoy it. And I think my subscriber or whoever bought it from me uh, is very, very happy because she saved a ton of money and it's it's a perfect little party bag. The rest of my worst purchases are all shoes and I don't have them because I either consigned them already or they just didn't work out. So I just like didn't even keep them. So first off, the dad sandals from Chanel. I know they are so comfortable, right? Everyone says that. But I don't know, they didn't really work out for me. If I cannot even walk around my own house comfortably without feeling like it's always kind of like pressing onto my feet in a bad way, like it's just different areas of my ankle that was getting pressed no matter how much I adjust the, the Velcros. And it was kind of like a plank, it was not really flexible. It was just, I don't know, it was just the anatomy of that shoe that didn't work for me. Uh, of course, my joint issues are partially to blame, I'm sure. They're brand new, like I never wore them out, so eventually I just sold them. The other pair of shoes that I have to mention, um, they're not a total fail, but you guys wanted to know my feedback on them, are the Hermes Easy 30 sandals. So those are so cute. They're very 90s, they're the platform cork sandals, and they just are slip-ons, which again, in my mind, I was like, oh, platforms, slip-ons, that would work for me. But I didn't think it through enough because while I used to wear platforms in my youth, if I did fall back then, it would be like, oh, okay, it would hurt, but that's okay. But now if I fall now with my joint issues, I would probably break a bone. I don't know, like break a joint. So I was incredibly scared of wearing them. And so I wore them once, literally once around a parking lot and went to a shop and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to change out of these shoes right away. And I never wore them again ever. So I just consigned them. It went to fashion file. Size wise, they were also a bit strange. At the time of buying them, they didn't have half sizing. So I went with 37, which I think is a bit on the tight side. So. There was that too. And the last pair of shoes are the Fuji boots. Okay, guys, if you live in a cold country, you would probably have thought about buying those shoes. And if you haven't bought them yet, please don't. <laughs> Unless it works out for you. I was not the only person that thought that they are uh, like terrible shoes. Um, first of all, my subscriber, who owns the same shoes told me that she could not even walk one or two blocks without feeling like she is about to die. <laughs> so that was a pretty good description, I think, of how I felt and I only tried it at home. So yes, I did buy those boots and I tried them at home. They are so flattering, like they look so good. I bought them in the white color. It's made of beautiful soft white goat skin it's so pretty and i thought that they would be the perfect winter boots rain boots for you know the kind of winters that we have here in western canada but no they were just the most awkward footbed i even tried it in the size up in the store because i thought maybe it was just the wrong sizing but it wasn't it was just a very very ill-fitting shoe, footbed, design in general, even though the overall exterior aesthetic is beautiful, but the inside of the shoe is so ill-fitting. It's just weird. <laughs> At least my worst list is not so long. I'm so glad about that um, because 
I hate it when I make bad purchases. And sometimes, yes, I can rehome them, but rehoming is extremely difficult. You end up losing money and time. And so it's not fun. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Uh, let me know some of your worst purchases so that I can avoid them too. And if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. I also do members only live streams. I would welcome you to join as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.